on BBC Two. This is Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is, the show that pitches TV's best lot of antiques experts against each other in an all-out battle for profit. Let's make hay while that sun shines. Each week, one pair of dueling dealers will face a different daily challenge. I've got an heavy profit here. <laughs> putting their reputations on the line. Who's there? They'll give you the insider's view of the trade. Wow. Oh. Along with their top tips and savvy secrets. That could present a problem. Showing you how to make the most money. Ready for battle. From buying and selling. Get in there. <laughs> Coming up, Danny Sebastian plots an antiques invasion. Wouldn't mind getting a bit of pottery, really, just to show Eric that I can play him at his own game. Eric Knowles brushes up on his bronze making. It's given me a good idea of all the work that's gone into uh, producing it. And there's a sing-song in the selling. Sewing machine, sewing machine, the greatest thing I've ever seen. Sewing machine, sewing machine, the greatest thing I've ever seen. This is Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is. Willkommen, bienvenue, and guten Tag to this latest conquest of the collectibles from the continent. Our two valiant challengers have spurned the warmth to their beds in favor of an early morning stroll around the antiques market at St. Truden in Belgium, all in the name of buying, selling, and beating their opponent to a winning profit. Our first contender is a knight of the round Chippendale table. Determined to throw down the gauntlet and be victorious in his quest to find the finest antique spoils. It's Sir uh, Eric the Knowledge Knowles. This is where you do battle. Keen to thwart Eric's challenge is the Prince of Paraphernalia. He's the silver tongued golden boy from Wellingborough, Danny Zilboy Sebastian. Plenty of nice stuff here. There's plenty of nice stuff. They've each got £750 worth of their own euros to spend, and all the profit goes to their chosen charities. But who will be able to stake their claim and secure the best of today's bounty? Eric Knowles and Danny Sebastian. It's time to put your money where your mouth is. Well, good middle of the night to you, because it well, feels like it. It is that. <laughs> but I'm, I'm used to that, you know, because I work the markets, I've done the fairs, yeah, yeah. so... But generally, by now, usually, you know, I'm sold up and gone home. <laughs> Looking at what I've seen, it looks like it's going to be a very nice fair uh, today. OK. It excellent. seems plenty of bus, you know, there's plenty of vehicles, there's plenty of people. Yeah. You can always spot the bargains, you know, because they've got a red light flashing over the top of them. Talk for yourself. You're a connoisseur in this game, so you can always spot... Oh, should I follow your lead? You can follow my lead, and whatever you do, buy the thing next to whatever I buy, you'll probably make more of a profit. I'll keep that in mind. Good on you. OK. Good luck. Go for it. Remember, we're batting for Britain. That will do. So, on the surface, both your experts are presenting a unified front. But how long will this entente cordiale last? Especially as Danny, it appears, isn't as confident as he let on. There's only one thing that's really worrying me, and that is the communication lapse. Obviously, they speak Belgium or Flemish here, and I speak English. I haven't really got a clue how to speak Flemish, so I've just got to work with my pen. But I'm rearing to go, and I want to buy some good gear. Yes, the pen is mightier than the Flemish phrase book, Danny. Now, the knowledge Knowles knows this market well, so how's he going to approach this campaign? Got to be methodical, because there's a lot of area to cover. It's about the size of a football pitch and a bit bigger, so... I'll have to do it two or three circuits just to make sure I cover everything. So Eric plans to scout out the stalls before he spends his euros. Danny, on the other hand, has already homed in on a potential purchase. A milkern. How much? Ah, uh, no. It appears Danny's pen has been replaced by a calculator. Oh. 25, Well, no translation necessary, but just to be absolutely clear. 
Okay. Yes, unable to resist the sheer enthusiasm of the man, Danny settles on 25 euros for the urn, which converts into 18 pounds and 52 pence. So, is he happy with his first purchase? This is a lovely brass urn. I date it round about mid 20th century. Very, very decorative piece, and I find nowadays that people just buy them, they like them, you know, and this is a, quite a nice piece being brass, really. They generally come in aluminium, gonna milk this one, I tell you, for a good profit. Yes, you'll be churning out the money, dear old boy. Across the market, Eric is sticking to his word and is methodically perusing up and down every aisle. 20, 20 for the two. Okay, thank you. But he's yet to spot anything he likes the look of, so he decides a change of tack is in order. I'm going to have to keep an open mind here and uh, maybe go for the quirky. But there again, my competitor. When it comes to quirks, he knows a good quirk when he sees one. Yes, he does indeed. Oh, what's that quirky little thing you've spotted there, Danny? Seems like a very, very early telephone. Um, it's got no digits on it, but... You've obviously got to wind it to get your numbers out, I suppose. Quite interesting. So intrigued by the piece, Danny moves in to negotiate with the camera-shy vendor. Hello, how much for this old phone? 95. Ow! Oh, that's a low blow. Very low blow. It's coming from the mines. From the mines. Very interesting. What sort of period? How old? 1938. What's the best prize you can do me? 80. 72. <laughs> Is that your best? No need to Slick and smooth, 75 euros for the mining phone converts to 55 pounds 56. But was it a good call? I'm going to be very interested in finding out a little bit more about it. Something that I've not really seen before. The gentleman's telling me that it was used in the mines. I suppose you'd be ringing up and telling upstairs that the coal bucket's full. Seems all intact as well, even the handles. It's got that nice firmness about it that is just right. With two buys to Eric Zero, it seems our Del Boy has a spring in his step. Plenty of nice stuff here. There's plenty of nice stuff. Whilst Eric, well, he's barely moved an inch. Well, at the moment, I'm struggling to find anything that comes under the heading of old. Right, aisle number two. But as Eric wades ever deeper into the market, he soon casts his line and catches some pottery. Let me look at this. Reeling in a set of 19th century plates with a price tag of 30 euros. Do you know what they say this spring? What is your best price? 10 euros. 10 euros each? Yes. OK, excellent. No haggle, Eric. 20 euros is 14 pounds 81, and he's finally landed his first catch of the day. Well, my two uh, plates could well be relatively local because I'm seeing a BK there on the back, not very distinct, uh, which tells me that they were probably made by Bosch Karamis, um, quite a well-known maker. But what I love about these plates is that they, they show French stroke Belgian humor. The top one shows a fisherman, and uh, he's hooked a whale, uh, only because he's got a lady's corset. And the stays in the corset were normally made from whalebone. So, so that's the connection there. And this one, uh, my French is somewhat wanting, but the verse at the bottom says, oh, I do like a man uh, who knows how to row his own boat. I think there's something in the saying that I like a man who knows where he's going in life. Now, these plates, I don't think, were ever meant to see a meal of any description. Um, they're made primarily to, uh, to put on the wall. Uh, they're there for nothing more than amusement. So the Prince of Pottery has stayed in his area of expertise with his first purchase. And it seems Del Boy has forgotten his early worries and his confidence is growing in bounds. So much he feels spurred on to venture into Eric's turf. Wouldn't mind getting a bit of pottery, really, just to show Eric that I can play him at his own game. But it's got to be a good piece. Hmm, this will be interesting, taking on the ceramic lord himself at his own game. 
Oh, oh, oh. What's going on here? Hey, get hey. off my ground, you. This is my you? ground. What do you want to buy? Get was... off my ground. I thought you was outside. <laughs> when when well, I go out, then you come in. Now, knowing your Wedgwood from your Wollendorfer in this game is key, but it seems Danny's not averse to getting some inside information. I'll tell you what, though, I've just seen a lovely bit of royal ducks. Can I have your expert opinion? Well, I thought it was quite pretty. Yeah. What's it worth? Well, I don't know. You're the expert here, mate. Yes, it's every man for themselves in this game, so while Danny finds out the price... 600? Wow. That's a big figure. Bit too rich for me, I think, that one. Eric leaves his rival to it and moves outside, where he snaps up a mantel clock for 35 euros or 25 pounds 93. Well, I'm very pleased with my clock garniture. Um, a lot of people might refer to it as being Art Deco. Uh, to be technical, it is sort of more art modern. It's, uh, it's a style that, that finds its way into mainstream art around about 1930. Black Belgian slate with uh, marble facings. It's very chic. That purchase means our dealers are now level pegging at two items apiece. Around the corner, Danny is hoping it won't stay that way for long. This is a lovely sewing machine, quite like industrial. And this is just a little bit different. I've seen a lot of sewing machines. I used to collect for a company in England uh, who was buying them for display purposes, but I've never seen one like this. It's for leather, I think. Probably about 1940s. Made of cast iron with the foot pedal. But it's just a little bit different. And with that, got my name all over it. Tell me, sir, what? how much? 200. No, no, no. Yes? No. How much? 100. Oh, no. Oh. no. Oh. Let me know. No, no, come no, on. No, 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 no. How much? What's the best? No, no. no. Give me a good price. 180 is the last price. 150. Ollie, go. 150. I love All that. Right. And have you tried to sell it before? Yes, yeah. I have many. Oh, you've tried to sell I it many times and no one ever bought it. I have many. <laughs> I... Yes, he was obviously waiting for you to come along, Del Boy. And that 150 euros converts to 111 pounds and 11 pence, making this sewing machine his most expensive purchase so far. And that brings us up to the halfway point in this Belgian buying bonanza. Time to find out who's been commanding and conquering and who's been waving the white flag. With a 750 pounds kitty, Eric has taken his time and so far spent 40 pounds and 74 pence on two items, leaving a little over 709 pounds in his pocket. Danny spent fast and big, with three items costing £185.19, which leaves him almost £565 for the rest of the day. Now, it's honesty time, because I don't mind telling you, my friend, I am struggling out there. It's hard, isn't it? It is hard. But isn't that the challenge? Danny, I'm, I'm trying to feed off your positivity, you know, uh, but there have been times during, uh, during this troll that I've lost the will to live. Yeah. I'm back, but now I've met you, I've recharged. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> that's what I didn't want to do. I want to keep all that Come energy on. for myself. Have you found a few bits, though? I have found a few bits, but like you say, it's difficult. Well, it's, it's looking for those big value objects that you think you're going to make some big money on. And so far, I've just been fishing and catching tiddlers. Just snap up what you know. Yeah. You're going to make a few quid on. OK, all right. Good. So onwards and upwards. Carry on, number one. Bonjour. Take the bridge. Take the bridge. Well, Eric's made no bones about it. He's been finding this market hard work. And having spent just a fraction of his budget, he's now on the lookout for his prize piece. You know, when you go around a place like this, you, you've really got to scan every stall, even though it looks as though the things on there are just of, well, of no great consequence. Because that's quite often why you find the hidden gem. In spite of thinking big, Eric's next purchase is hardly a bank breaker. He spends 10 euros on an Art Deco inkwell, which converts to £7.41. 
Meanwhile, Danny is turning up the heat, spotting an early 20th century blowtorch with a price tag of 25 euros. But our Del Boy has a lower price in mind. How much? Ha ha ha! Hmm, it seems the high five was obviously too low. Perhaps a pen and paper haggle will work. 18 and a smile. 19? 19. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. A flash of those pearly whites helps Danny nab it for 14 pounds and seven pence. This is a lovely little brass blowtorch. I'd estimate it to be about 1920s. Quite nice. I think it's absolutely fantastic, really. It's got some great writing on it. Beware of imitations. A nice little wooden handle. You know, it's just nice and tactile. You're going to want to pick it up and play with it. It's a prime boy's toy. Somebody's going to really polish this up and bring it back up to sparkling condition. I love it. Danny's boy toy blue torch nudges him back in the lead with four buys to Eric's three. Inside the market, old Nolsey is still trying to spot a big money buy, and something catches his eye. A pair of early Victorian spectacles. Let's go look in the... Thank you very much. You've got to try them on, haven't you? Sorry. Careful, Eric. These are no ordinary specs. They can reveal your inner hippie. Yeah, baby! Very nice. They suit you. They suit me, do they? Oh, thank you. How much are they? Uh, I'm asking 45. 45. If, if I was to offer 40, would that be acceptable? So, Eric pays a thrifty £29.63 and 63 pence for the Ocular Objet d'Art. It's nice to see that they're in their original carrying case, which is just carved wood. Uh, but what makes these spectacles interesting is the fact that they've got blue lenses. Now, I can tell you these are not sunglasses. Um, apparently, they're made for an eye condition. I think it's something called astigmatism, but I might have that bit wrong. But what I do know is that these date to around about 1840 to maybe 1860. I'm now in search of a specialist spectacle collector. And having spent just a tenth of his budget, Eric goes back on the prowl. But time is running out as the stalls begin to shut down. The question is, will he get his big money by? Meanwhile, Danny is having a minor meltdown. I hope I look worried, because I am. Time's running short. Yes, well, you won't find any more in there, Del Boy. So, in the race to the finish line, Danny is feeling indecisive. How much? Ten, ten euro. Ten euro? Yeah. I might be back. Yeah. While Eric, who's been once round the track, has headed back to the vendor who sold him the spectacles, he has his eye on a 19th century ornament. I've just found this, this bronze model of a racehorse. Um, and the first thing you'll obviously look for is to see if there's a signature. But, but nothing. He's just missing a screw, and he'll be back on his feet properly. So the price is, is 180. Um, I'd like to offer 175. Is there any chance that we could do that for 175? So that's my biggest buy of the day. So after chomping at the bit to find a big money buy, Eric spends 129 pounds 63. And decides to call it a day. Danny, however, is not far behind as he heads back to the mirror with a 10 euro price tag. And despite having over 550 pounds still in his kitty, Del Boy's pleading poverty. 10 euro. Mm, come down. I've run out of money. Can you do five? No, it's good. And the deal is done, so cue Danny's horse impression. Yes? Hey! <laughs> That's made me day. That's made me day. And with that, Danny secures his final item in the last throws of the market for five euros or three pounds and seventy pence. It all got a bit desperate towards the end. I ran out of time. I bought this mirror. It's quite a simple one, but it's got a nice brass frame on it, and it's in the shape of a watch. It's not beveled edge, but it only cost me five euro. 
very, very cheap, really. So I don't think I'm going to have a problem selling this piece. And that brings us to the end of our foreign foray. So let's see what they spent in beautiful Belgium. Starting the day with £750 worth of euros, Eric purchased five items and spent £207.41. Danny bought the same amount but spent a fiver less, £202.96. So with neither dealer managing to splash the cash, what will they make of each other's hauls? Danny, I've got to say that we've both come pretty good. We've come up trumps again, haven't we? That's got to be your favourite, that little well, bit I'm of bronze. A, I'm hoping that I've backed a winner with that, if you pardon <laughs> the pun. <laughs> but racehorses and bronze racehorses invariably find the right type of buyer. Definitely. I, I love the plates because they're, they're Belgian, although they're lettered in French, but they're very humorous. I won't go into too much detail, but that's Belgian humour for you. And, and in your case, I can see I'm dealing with a heavy metal man. You definitely are. We rock. Yeah, do you? Yes. <laughs> well, I think the, um, I've got, uh, that singer, I like it. It's a um, big one. Um, it's actually a leather sewing machine for shoes. Is it? It is. Well, you'd know that, because you're a Northamptonshire lad, aren't you? Well, that's right. Well, what, what's, what's this big Now, this, this little baby here is an, um, is an early Ericsson, uh, mine telephone. Oh, is it? Not quite sure how it worked, but I suppose that was underneath yeah. or upstairs, and they telephoned through and said, you know, oh, I see. take so the cart away. They've got to be very careful with electric sparks and things like that. So once it's in a, a that looks like a very solid cast iron cabinet. Doesn't That's it? right. Okay. Yeah. Insulated and all that. Right. What's your favourite lot? For me, my favourite lot. Well, to be frank with you, I love the spectacles because I saw the box and I knew they should have had specs in. And when they came out, they were that little bit special because they've got blue lenses and uh, i think they use those for a form of astigmatism or it's some eye defect either way so you get you know for every uh, let's say 500 uh, pairs that you get with clear lenses you'll get one wow. with blue lenses Bit special then yeah listen we've had a day out we could be at home doing the ironing couldn't we look on the bright side of life i shall do okay ciao See ya. Belgian bargainers must now head home to good old Blighty and turn their attention to selling. Eric and Danny will scour the breadth of our great nation from its metropoli to its manor houses in search of profitable homes for all their foreign spoils. Each expert is driven, driven to win and make more profit than their opponent, with all their earnings going to a charity of their choice. So, back in Wellingborough, Danny is reflecting on his collectibles campaign. The real cream of the crop here today is this Singer Cobbler's sewing machine. Um, a great thing, that. I think, it, you know, I've not seen uh, any of these sewing machines with this base before, um, so it's just a little bit different. And nowadays, you know, if you look on the high street, you see that a lot of people have got old machinery in their shops as props. There's going to be an healthy profit on it. Then I've got my little silvert blowtorch silver is the maker's name it's got writing on it you know it's even got this is not an imitation great i think it's quite fun gotta try and find a collector of blowtorches or something of that description really for that piece the mill kern nice little thing that quite commercial whether somebody wants to use them in the garden but i'm not even going to use it in that field i'm going to stick a cushion on the top and sell it as a seat a stool Mmm, how very creative, Del Boy. Let's hope it pays off. And don't forget, Danny will also need to find homes for his miner's phone and mirror. Over in Buckinghamshire, Eric is considering his Belgian bonanza. Well, I'm now back from Belgium, and I've brought a little bit of Belgium back with me. My horse, well, struggling to find a stable for that at the moment. It's a nice object. It's not a huge amount of money, but it's not signed. And with bronzers, you do like to see a signature. Uh, now, I've got to say that um, the spectacles, I was delighted to find those. Um, I've always been interested in early specs, and those are, uh, I've been doing my research, from around about 1845 to maybe 1865, so uh, 
relatively early. I've got an art modern clock set. Yes, you can say art deco if you like, but I like to say modern because these are around about 1930, 1935 in black Belgian slate. And also um, Belgian is this wonderful, very sort of heavy masculine uh, marble inkstand. Um, now these really need to go into a good and large art, dare I say, modern house. There are one or two in this area, so I'll be maybe knocking on a few doors. And he'll also need to find a profitable home for his 19th century Belgian plates. So now is the time to hit the phones, the internet and the road. But remember, no deal is done until they've shaken on it and they're counting the cash. First off the starter's gun is Danny, who's found a micropub in his hometown of Wellingborough where there's interest in the brass mill kern he bought for £18.52. Now, Danny planned to turn the urn into a stool, so time to reveal his expert upcycling. Tell him what I've got. Stool. Oh, well, it was a nice idea, but will owner Martin appreciate all that effort? It's a stand-up day. Take the stool off, umbrella stand, especially if it's raining. Of course. Want to keep the door open? Put it against the door. Door stop. Lovely, that. No, nice I do like angles. it. Are you going to like the price? That's the question. Oh, let's get to the business part. Give me 75 quid. No. Uh, you say micro pub, micro money. prices. Yeah. <laughs> micro pub, micro money, eh? Hey. I don't believe that for a second. I've seen this place packed. No, 25 pounds. Oh, no, Martin. No. I do like it, but... Y you do like it, but you don't like me. <laughs> oh, come on. 60 quid. 40. Final Five. Offer. 40, final offer. Why are you being hard on me now? Oh, dear. Is Danny's milk going to turn sour on him? This like is it. an adaptable what? thing that is going to fit into your shop greatly. How about meeting in the middle? 42.50. 45. 4250. All the fours. 4250. I'll take it. I'm gonna grab it. Well, Martin was no pushover, but our stubborn salesman manages to milk a profit of £23.98. A nice little earner. That's my first sale done. I did double my money, but to be quite honest with you, it was just a small purchase with a small profit. I need to up the ante. So Danny's desperate to do better. Meanwhile, Eric has made his way to Soho, London, and he's hoping to get up close and personal with his first buyer. I'm here to meet a man who will always see me right because he sells spectacles. Ah, good one, old boy. Remember, Eric paid just under £30 for the spectacles, but will frame maker and vintage optics collector Tom like what he sees? Spectacles, what is it about spectacles? I mean, they are wearing a designer pair. Did you design those yourself? These, yes, these are my own work. I mean, the beautiful thing about spectacles is they're an amazing piece of design, but yeah. also help you see. Well, I hope I can get you excited with, um, with my uh, spectacles. 19th century, steel, steel wire, oval lens with a blue tint. And over the last 2,000 years, people have used all different types of colours of lenses to affect and ameliorate different medical conditions. Right. Blue was very popular in the 19th century, partly because, you know, there's always that kind of pseudo-medical element, but I think right. it became associated with a kind of sort of status in society as well, and particularly the legal profession. So do you have a, have a collection of early specs? Yeah, absolutely so. I'd love to add to my 19th century metal collection. Oh. All these things are possible, Tom. <laughs> All these things are possible. Um, but if I was to ask for, say, £80 for those, where would you come up with So 80 seems a bit punchy to me. If I was to be looking at an auction or looking at a collector's fair, yeah. I'd be looking more in the range of 40 to £45. Pounds. £55, pounds, do you think we could do a deal? I think we could do a deal. Good lad, put it there. Mm, Eric certainly saw clearly on that deal, adding £25.37 to his profit pot. Yeah, that's enough now. Time to get back to selling. Eager to build on his sales success, Eric rolls his wheels to Oxfordshire. He's brought his 19th century Belgian plates to show French restaurateur Antoine. Uh, and du. Parfait. They're, they're not actually French, um, they're Belgian. 
very um, well. Because they've got um, the mark on the back for Bosch, Bosch Freyer. But they are in very good order, and I think I date-wise, they're best. around about 1895, maybe 1900. So would you be kind enough to translate into Anglaise? Pour, pour moi. Avec grand plaisir. Okay. Sports, fishing. Yes. Amazing, wonderful. Okay. A deep fried whales board. I beg your pardon. It makes any sense to you? Yes, 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 it does. Then corset. Yeah, well, Eric seems to get it. So, basically, we know that the corset has got whalebone stays, you know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So that is the connotation, yes? Okay, and, and this is obviously um, French humour. It yeah? is indeed, yeah. Okay. Do they appeal to you? That's the thing. They do indeed. It reminds me of my grandma's house, where she's got a few. Not those ones, sadly, so it gives me an ID. So, yeah, now it depends, of course. Okay. Well, come at me with an offer. Normally, I would spend about £20 for a present. So what about that one? 20 on this one at 30 20 and 30 that's that's £50. Pounds. It is indeed. Okay. Cash. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll, let me offer another deal. I'll offer you that at 25 okay? And I'll offer you that at 25 How's that sound? Not quite the same. <laughs> it's the same the money. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. Yes, with a joke befitting his plates, Eric is laughing all the way to the bank, pocketing just over £35. Pounds. That sale nudges Nolsey ahead with two sales to Danny's one. But not to be outdone, Danny is eager to prove his boots are made for walking with his next sale. I'm here in Elsbarton, the historical town of the boot and shoe industry, to see Georgina. Now, she has a village museum. I'm going to try and sell her my Singer Cobbler's machine. Let's hope I don't get stitched up. Remember, this cobbling collectible cost Danny a whopping £111.11. pence. So, will he make his money back? Good morning, Georgina. Oh, I, see, good morning. I see you're having a lovely look at it. Yes, well, I want to know what you've got me into here. Of course you do. What do you think? Yeah, it's not bad, not bad. Not bad? It's going to need a bit of rubbing up and a bit of, you know, conditioning, but I know a man that can do that. That's not a problem. How it works, you see, that that revolves at 360 degrees, and that is why you can mend all sorts of things, because you put the leather behind, and then you can stitch it, you see, and move it round. This seems like a great thing. Yeah, it's a good bit of kit. I'm dreading this moment, to be honest. Come on, then. Are you ready? Yeah. 3.30. No! It's too much, Danny. Too Come much. on, yeah, you've got to go down a bit, I'm afraid. If you sing... The nursery rhyme, sewing machine, the sewing machine, the greatest machine I've ever seen. I'll go up to 235. Yes, Georgina has a bizarre bartering technique, isn't she? Well, this is a singer sewing machine, but Eurovision, this ain't. I'm a terrible singer. I can do a lot of things, but one thing I can't do is sing. No, great big man like you with a big booming voice. <laughs> sewing machine, sewing machine. There's just, well, we'll have it. 240, if I, if I, if I pass the test. OK. Sewing machine, sewing machine, the greatest thing I've ever seen. Sewing machine, sewing machine, the greatest thing I've ever seen. You're done. It's... Uh, yeah, that's brilliant. OK. Well, I'll, let, yeah. I'll let you... Oh, lovely. Oh, we deserve it. Mwah. Well, talk about singing for your supper. But that performance brings Danny a tasty profit of £128.89. And that sale puts our duo neck and neck. But the singing salesman decides to get ahead by heading to the market town of Kettering in Northamptonshire. Where he sells his novelty mirror to vintage cafe owner Jade. £18? Yeah, go on Give then. us a shake. <laughs> Making a modest profit of £14.30. And with that, we're at the midway point of selling. So let's see whose profit is knocking it out of the park and whose sales are striking out. So far, Eric has made a profit of £60.56 on the two items that he's sold. But Danny is way out in front, having sold three items, giving him a meaty £167.17 profit. Now, we all know that Eric is the Prince of Pottery. Bronze isn't his forte. So, to help him sell his equine sculpture, he's decided to buff up on his bronze wear. 
He's come to Oxfordshire to meet Hamish, an artist and master sculptor, to find out how much of a thoroughbred he's backed. I mean, it's got some age. It's, oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Late 19th century. It, it looks like it's been sand cast because of the slight pitting on the surface. If you were lucky, you picked it up for a couple of hundred quid. What would it cost today to make something like that? We're yeah. looking at just over a thousand pounds just to make. So an asking price from my perspective of let's say two to 250 pounds should be considered to be reasonable. Very reasonable. Good. So Eric may have got a bargain in Belgium, but before he gets back to trying to find a buyer for the bronze, he takes the opportunity to find out exactly how this magnificent metal is cast today. Starting with the design and modeling of the sculpture from clay and making it into a negative mold, which is fired and hardened. We're finally ready for the bronze pouring, which is where the magic happens. The metal is heated to 1200 degrees and poured in to fill the mold. When a bronze is finished, it comes out the color of a shiny two-p coin. Yes. Uh, and what I now do is I, I patinate it. You're basically changing the color, mm -hmm. and we use a mixture of heat and various different chemicals. It's given me a good idea of all the work that's gone into uh, producing it. And by rights, I should be asking the best part of a thousand pounds for this I thing. Think so. But, I think so. but I don't think I'm going to get away with that. Listen, uh, let... Eric, thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Well, a thousand pounds may be a bit steep, but as Eric only paid just shy of 130 pounds, he's still in a very strong position. And armed with all that extra info about his horse, is taking it to show an old antiquing acquaintance, Geoffrey, who owns an art market gallery in Belgravia, London, and specializes in bronze equine pieces. And that is my little horse. Um, he, he's... His glasses on for this. Okay. He is what he is. It's 19th century, isn't it? Sque yeah. Squeaking in there. Yeah, no, it's, 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 I like it. What do you want for this? The, well, for I see this uh, maybe around the 300 mark, but anything to do with horses, no, you're pretty yeah. well on the mark. Well, that's that flattery, Eric. It goes a long way, I yeah. have to say. Um, you know, I, I, I do like it. It's not quite a thing, but I, I like it. I mean, I would be more tempted around the 250. You might push me to 260. No, Geoffrey, I'm not going to push you anywhere. Yeah. Um, if you're happy around the 250 mark, that's good enough for me. Are you sure? Yeah, well, I'm, no, I'm no. happy with that. No, I, I think I've got a bargain. I, I, listen, I, listen, listen. I make a profit, you make a profit. Yeah, um, that's what this game's all about. Everybody's yeah? happy. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Go on. And make a profit he did. £120.37 to be exact. Proving his bronze horse was a solid bet. Both dealers have sold their big ticket items for a healthy profit, and the competition is still wide open. On a roll, Eric goes on to sell his marble inkwell to an antique dealer in London for £50, earning himself a profit of £42.59. He then travels to West Drum in Kent with his Art Deco clock to meet Ashton. I would go in at £80. I think at £80 I can take a chance. Clocking up a profit of just over £54. And with that, the knowledge is all sold up. While Eric's already crossed the finish line, Danny still has two items to sell, and he's not hanging around, scooting north to the old Norman stronghold of Clitheroe, where he sells his 1920s miner's phone to Matt at his vintage emporium. Can I squeeze you for a little bit more? 90. That'll do. Yeah? Yeah. Well. Do, I'll be at that. Yeah. So Danny can phone home and report a profit of £34.44. And continuing his northern selling spree, Danny heads to the picturesque village of Wally in Lancashire with his vintage blowtorch to show head chef Gareth at a local restaurant in Delhi. It cost Del Boy just over £14, but will he be able to cook up a profit? Now then, I came here one time before and I thought that creme brulee that I had needed a bit more glaze. I've got just the thing to put the job right. Yeah, look, it's just the ticket. How about, oh, that's what I like to hear. It just looks the ticket, that, doesn't it? Uh, but I, I'm not sure if it works. I thought, you know what? I'm not going to muck about with it. I'm going to leave it as, but I think in this kitchen, it, 
Hey, great souvenir. That, 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 that you know, yeah. this is a special one. This is, you know, look. Looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, it certainly does. Right, then. So, shall we see what needs to go in it and uh, fire it up? Oh, you won't bother with all that. I'm getting a bit... You don't want to be firing it all up and all that carry on. I'll, I'll, You're not I, confident uh, in your product? Well, it's not to say I'm not confident in my product. It's just that um, you've got to appreciate, Chef, that this is an antique. And I, I'm just... You know, it's had a lot of wear and tear. This, you know, it's had a lot of usage. Been in and... service longer than I have, that has. Exactly my point. The only problem we might have is that I think this runs on kerosene or something like that, uh, or paraffin, and we can only really use butane in the kitchen with it being a food product. Yes, but of course, um, you know, um, make a nice little, uh, you know, showpiece or, or it you nice know, in my kitchen actually. It can be yours. Right, if the price is right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Well, let's talk turkey. <laughs> <laughs> talk turkey. I prefer to talk goose. It's a bit more expensive. Right. Well, I want fifty quid anyway, chef. Fifty pounds. Forty-five for cash. And a free creme brulee. Uh, well, will you go 48? I'll go 48. You'll go 48, won't you? Oh, Give well, us your hand here. Come on. Eggs to the meal's done. Till Boy secures a delicious profit of £33.93, and that sweet deal is Danny's final sale of the day. I couldn't resist it. Mmm. So sweet. And a sweet profit also. With the moment of truth nearly upon us, who will be walking away with today's crown and who will be left weeping at the sidelines? First, a quick reminder of what they spent in Belgium. Our duo started the day with £750 worth of euros to spend. Eric bagged five items costing £207.41. Danny also picked up five purchases and spent £202.96. But now it's all about the profit. All the money that our boys have made will go to their chosen charities. So, without further ado, let's find out who is today's. Put your money where your mouth is. Champion. Well, Danny, hey, I tell you what, it's, it's good to go to travelling, but it's good to get back home, isn't it? It is indeed. So tell me about your best buy and your favourite item. Oh, well, my best buy, without a doubt, was the Cobblers Singer sewing machine. Very much your area, Northampton. Well, of course, you know? yes, the Cobblers. Yeah. Lovely people. Lovely profit. Yeah. And what was your best one? Well, profit-wise, my little bronze horse came in at very good odds. Oh, it did, did it? It did, yeah. Galloped in and won. Well, you know, it led by more than a head, let's put it that way, all through. Shall we see how we got on? Why not? Come on! OK, one, two, three... Oh! oh. You picked me! Oh! You picked me to the post! By a smidgen. Well, that's enough. It's enough. Come on, let's go and... Uh, Resolved it. Yes, indeed. Yes, Eric has won today's race, and it was that little bronze horse that got him a photo finish win. Well, it's always good to win. It's going to put my competition on the back foot there. But in all fairness, I think it was miraculous that we both found enough interesting objects to buy on the day. It was a tough call. I wish I'd have squeezed a couple more quid out of my clients, because it was close, but it just weren't close enough. Better luck next time. Yes, tomorrow our pair get to fight it out in one last hurrah as they go head to head in the contest to end all contests, the showdown. On tonight's celebrity anti 